Hello and welcome to the CTPFGI demonstration. In this demo we'll look at how CTPFGI can be used to trace programs at the macro and instructional levels. Let's open an ALC terminal window by clicking on the ALC terminal button in the system tab of the ribbon menu. Not only does this open an ALC window, but it also adds the trace tab to the ribbon menu. Now, as an example, Let's run a command that checks the availability of trains running from Washington to Chicago. As you can see, the command is completed and the output is shown in the ALC terminal window. Now let's run it again, but tell it to stop before the execution of any macros and programs. We can do this by selecting all macros and all programs in the debug menu. Now, if we run the availability Washington to Chicago command again, the execution stops just before the execution of the first macro of the first program that is encountered. In this case, this is the entrc macro in the CIAA program. From here, we can step. Each time we step, the execution runs until the next macro is reached. If we want to, we can execute a number of steps at once. We can do this by setting a step count. Simply click on the Set Step Count button and the Set Step Count dialog will appear. Just enter the number of steps and click the Step button on the dialog box and the execution will advance the specified number of steps before stopping again. Now, each time we click the Step Count button on the ribbon menu, the execution will advance that number of steps. As we've set the Step Count to 10, when we click Step Count, the ECB will advance 10 steps before stopping. This can be seen in the machine lines. This is how you step through macros, but now let's look at stepping through instructions. If we click the instruction step button on the ribbon menu, the execution will advance until it reaches the next instruction. Now, if we click step count, the execution will advance by the specified number of instructions, in this case 10. We can return to macro stepping by clicking the step button again. Now if we click step count, we have returned to stepping through macros. When you finish tracing an ECB, you can click on the Exit ECB button to exit the ECB immediately, without executing the rest of the command. Or you can click Run No Trace. This will run the ECB to completion without tracing, although your trace options are still preserved. Let's run Availability Washington Chicago again. This time, Let's specify that we only want to stop in programs that we're interested in. For our example, we know that the Availability Washington Chicago command uses the program RES0 through to RES6. So let's select the RES programs to be the only ones that we're interested in. To do this, we can click the Selected Programs button in the ribbon menu. This pops up the Trace Programs dialog. We can click the Add button and then enter RES into the Add Programs box. If, instead of specifying which programs we want to stop in, we wanted to exclude specific programs, we can do this by checking the Exclude checkbox. Now we can click OK and close the Trace Programs dialog. We've selected to stop in all macros in any of the RES programs. Now, when we run the command, Instead of stopping at the first macro in the first program, the execution stops at the first macro in the first res program. If we step a few more times, you can see that we're only stopping in res programs. Now let's narrow our trace further by specifying which macros to stop at. To do this, let's return to the trace options and click the selected macros button. This brings up the select macros and macro groups dialog. Let's select a stop at all storage macros and all send macros. Notice that the macros in that group are highlighted. You can also select individual macros if you need to. We can click OK to close the dialog and then return to the ECB and step a few more times. Let's do this all at once using the step count. Now, if we look at the machine lines, we can see that the execution still only stops at res programs, but also only stops at storage and send macros. As before, 
When we finish tracing, we can either click on the Exit ECB button to exit the ECB immediately without executing the rest of the command, or we can click Run No Trace. However, as the Availability Washington Chicago command doesn't contain any more stops that match our trace criteria, let's just step and allow the command to run to completion. The macro instruction level trace has many more features such as the ability to edit data blocks, apply macros via drag and drop and the ability to handle commands with multiple ECBs. To find out more about these and other features, please watch the demos entitled ECB Window Layout, ECB Block Editing and Multiple ECBs. Thanks for watching this demonstration of how ZTPFGI can be used to trace programs at the macro and instructional levels. To find out more about the ZTPFGI suite, please watch some of the other demos that are available, take a look at our brochure, or contact us for further information.